In 1990, America needed a different kind of political courage. With a national recession looming and a federal deficit that had tripled over the last decade and risen to $200 billion, America needed responsible action from its leaders in Washington. President George H.W. Bush needed to make a difficult choice. In order to solve the problem, he would have to compromise with congressional Democrats and risk his political future. He had promised Americans no new taxes during the presidential campaign two years earlier, and he was voted into office on that promise. But he had also promised to serve his country, and he decided that that was the promise that he would keep. Both parties compromised to pass the 1990 Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, which significantly raised a number of tax rates in exchange for limits on annual discretionary spending. The president who began the year with overwhelming national approval ratings ended it with far less support, and he quickly became the target of attacks from both sides of the aisle. The budget deal enacted responsible and desperately needed reforms at the expense of the president's popularity and his chances for re-election. America's gain was President Bush's loss, and his, and his decision to put country above party and political prospects makes him an example of a modern profile and courage that is all too rare. I know we wish that President Bush could be here with us today, but we are so happy that Lauren Bush Lauren is here on behalf of her grandfather. Lauren is a committed public servant in her own right. She works as the CEO, creative director, and co-founder of Feed Projects, and is the chairman, and chairman of the board and co-founder of the Feed Foundation, an organization that raises funds and support for United Nations, the United Nations World Food Program's efforts to feed school children around the world. The Feed Foundation, with its partner, Feed Projects, has provided 60 million free nutritious meals to kids around the world. It is my honor to invite Lauren Bush Lauren on stage to accept the 2014 Profile and Courage Award for her grandfather, George Herbert Walker Bush. Thank you, Jack. Thank you all. Um, this is such an honor for me and for my grandfather and for my whole family. Um, I'd like to start by reading a short message from my grandfather. I wish to send my sincere thanks to the John F. Kennedy Library Foundation and their selection committee for the decision they rendered that led to today's proceedings. I can only hope that the vote itself wasn't too excruciating or too close for the members. <laughs> I recall how shortly after leaving the White House, the school district board where I used to live in Midland, Texas, decided to name the local elementary school after yours truly. After it passed by a landslide 3-2 vote, <laughs> it was explained that the two dissenting votes were based on the fact that we normally only name things after dead people. <laughs> At age 89 and 7 eighths, let me assure you, your kind words really do mean a lot to me. And to receive this award with such an illustrious history and bearing such an illustrious name means more than mere tongue can tell. I am sorry I could not be there in person, but a nasty rumor spread that your menu encompassed a deconstructed study in broccoli. <laughs> So I have gamely sent a special emissary to confront the florets. <laughs> Thank you for remembering what our team tried to do low those many years ago. One thing is sure, even today, at age 89 and 7 eighths, my Gampy still has a zest for living. Most of you, I'm sure, have seen his crazy socks. <laughs> they come in all colors and all patterns. More recently, there was even a YouTube video of him rapping to an MC Hammer song that Jimmy Fallon put together. Even if my grandfather is not quite sure what a homeboy is, he loves that video. <laughs> it is not hard to imagine how President Kennedy, with his love of skinny ties and passion for life, would have shown much of the same, same style and panache had he been given the blessing of old age. Of course, we are here to recognize and celebrate a singular act of political courage nearly a quarter of a century ago when politics in our world were very different. I went back and looked at the circumstances surrounding the 1990 budget deal, and I was struck by the many challenges we were facing at that point in our history. 
That fall, my grandfather had sent half a million troops halfway around the world to defend a tiny Kuwait from a lawless and brutal invasion. Meanwhile, he was also helping to engineer the reunification of Germany that October and manage democratic reforms throughout Central and Eastern Europe in ways that eventually led to the peaceful end of the Cold War. On top of that, he was also the second president elected to serve a full term in office without party control in, in either the Senate or the House. That made progress, any progress, domestically very difficult. Candidly speaking, my grandfather did not want to raise taxes in 1990, but our constitutional system of governance says that Congress also gets a say. And besides that, he felt he owed the American people action and results. Compromise is a dirty word in Washington today because we live in an age of the perpetual campaign. But once we get back to realizing the importance of actual governance, I suspect this too will pass. While I'm at it, my grandfather wishes to join you in recognizing Mayor Bridges and congratulating him for this much deserved recognition this year. The fact is we need more political leadership and courage at all levels of government. And we can all hope Mayor Bridges' personal example of standing on principle will inspire more elected officials on both sides of the aisle. Not lost on anyone, I suspect, is the symbolism of a grandson of a much admired president of the United States conferring a prestigious award that is being accepted by the granddaughter of another president. Perhaps the fact that we are brought together in this way and on this day to celebrate the ideals of public service with this honor, perhaps, just maybe, the torch is once again being passed, not from family to family, but from generation to generation. There is so much need in our world. There is so much hurt in our world. It is going to take all of us to meet those challenges. But fortunately, we are lucky to have had and to have leaders like John Kennedy, like George Bush, like Barbara Bush, I have to include her, I'd be in big trouble, <laughs> and Paul Bridges to inspire us and to help to lead us forward. So on behalf of my Gampy, George H.W. Bush, and our entire family, I want to say thank you. Thank you.